Hello, and welcome to another photography adventure. I'm here in Iowa now. Fast forward from that last video. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna actually jog the whole time. <laughs> I'll just jog in between these shots, but here we are, these are the local woods. With me today, I have the Pentax K3 Mark III and the Sigma 5 to, <laughs> 50 to 500, the Bigma lens, which I bought um, about a month ago. Got a really good deal on it and thought I'd give it a try. Will I keep this lens or will I sell it? Because I'm already on the fence about selling it. Red wing blackbird perched beautifully. I don't know what kind of bird this is. That's kind of the fun bit about living in a new spot. So we got red wing blackbird, some bird I don't know. Beautiful bird noises all around us. Just a beautiful day. So many birds. There's our resident geese. Let me tell you a little bit about this lens. This is the Sigma 5 to 500 millimeter f 4.5 to 6.3 APO HSM. It's nicknamed the Bigma because uh, of its large size, but also its 10x zoom range. It does cover the full frame. Uh, this is an APS-C camera, my Pentax K3 Mark III but it does cover the full frame, so it is quite a large lens, a big, heavy lens. Probably the largest and heaviest I've used. I think my Pentax 400mm f5.6, the f8 star version, was probably heavier, um, but that, that's that been a while. Actually, it might not have been. It was fairly compact for what it was. Anyway, so huge lens, and this lens is especially important in the Pentax world because we don't have a lot of zooms, premium zooms, and uh, especially super zooms, the long range or even primes for that matter. And so it's kind of one of the only third-party options and there's just hardly any first-party options. There's the new 150 to 450 um, that came out a couple of years ago now. But besides that, before that even, this was kind of your only option. And now this is the budget option for that lens. So I was able to get this for just over $300, which um, I, think, I think at that price represents a ton of value, but even still a little bit skeptical skeptical of his performance, which you'll see from these examples. Oh, they're gone. This lens does hunt quite a bit. Um, I mean, some of that's obviously the camera too, but lens definitely hunts. I don't know what bird that is either. Just bird with a beautiful pattern. Come back. So the competitor to this lens in my book, the other lens I own, is the DA Star 300mm f4, which is obviously a super different lens <laughs> in tons of ways. It's a prime, it's shorter, it's faster, it's lighter, it's smaller, which is nice. Um, but it doesn't have this big of a zoom range, but this, the, I didn't buy this really for the, the fact that you could get all the way down to 50 millimeters. That's like kind of nice, but for how I photograph at least, I almost never ever need that or even want that. I'm just almost all the way out in the 400, 500 range anyway. And we'll just get this red wing blackberry real quick, just to prove you can take wider shots. As far as the features of this lens, it does have two optical stabilization modes inside the lens, which is pretty cool. Seems to work all right with the sensor stabilization. I've only noticed a little bit of wonkiness with it, and that's probably user error anyway. It does have a manual switch if you want to. You can dial in the focus at any time, even with autofocus on. So if you need to do some fine tuning adjustment on the fly, you can. Then there's obviously the lock I said. It locks at 50 millimeters so it doesn't creep, which is super nice. And yeah, there's a huge filter thread. It's like 95 or 100 or something. <laughs> so it's quite large. There is a tripod collar for it as well. If you wanted to use it on a tripod or a gimbal for your wildlife, I think that would be a nice touch. The month of using this lens, I just haven't gotten that many pictures I like out of it. I did have to do some focusing adjustment. That helped. I learned that you basically just should always stop it down to F8 and that's when you get the more usable results. And I feel <laughs> I feel really picky saying that because it does look really good actually, but I'm just so spoiled by my DA Star 300 
And this is actually not really solving any problems that my DA Star 300 had. I just wish my 300 was longer but had the same optical quality, and this does not. And that was basically the only thing I needed. I didn't really want to zoom, um, although I thought I'd try it out. Turns out I don't really use it that much. I'm just at the long end. And then I wanted that same optical quality all the way out. I still wanted the faster aperture, like f5.6 or something, and this just doesn't solve any of that. But let me know what you think of the results, the pictures, if you like them, and... Maybe that gives you an idea of how this lens performs. I think it performs really well, and for the 300 bucks I paid, first off, that's it performs well for that, and then secondly, there you don't have any other option in the Pentax world for that price. It's pretty insane. Um, so it's just a question in my mind of like whether or not I would take this over the DA Star 300 and just crop in, which I feel like gives me similar, if not better, quality even. I don't know. That, that DA Star 300, man. It's such a good lens. Oh, except the SDM failed, so now it focuses super loudly with screwdrive. And this one's silent, so... I wish they make a PLM version of that lens. I've heard about this. He's a photographer out of Arkansas that used to make a lot of content on YouTube as well. He might still be, I'm not sure. We were chatting about it on Flickr, and basically I was like, yeah, this lens is pretty, pretty much what I've said already. It's a good lens, but I'm just spoiled by that DA Star 300. <laughs> I just don't want anything else. And uh, yeah, we were talking like, man, how cool would it be if they did a PLM version of that lens? And that would be awesome. I'd actually be tempted to pay whatever ludicrous price they would charge for that. I don't really normally buy new stuff. I don't think I've ever bought new stuff, but I'd be tempted to. For hey, thanks for joining me on this adventure. It was fun, got some cool pictures, talked about some cool gear. I'm glad to be back. Um, back doing this more often, hopefully taking on some adventures. And, uh, glad to be with you. Hope you're doing awesome. And until next time, happy snapping.